Good evening, everybody. I'm Ryan O'Donnell and I'm Kristen Farley. Thanks for joining us tonight. The new president hitting the ground running. Really, Donald Trump already signing bills and executive orders in the White House. Yeah, he was sworn in today at noon with hundreds of thousands of people witnessing the Capitol ceremony and amid all of the pomp and circumstance were protests, some of them turning violent. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Washington, D.C. tonight with a look at some of today's highlights. A new era ushered in with some old traditions. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania making the rounds at three inaugural balls, celebrating the end of this historic day. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. The 45th President of the United States sworn into office, then sharing with the cheering crowd his vision for the country. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. Former President Obama now on vacation in Palm Springs after moving out of the White House, leaving a note for his successor and these words for the American people. I could not be prouder. This has been the privilege of my life. And though protesters clash with police in the streets of the nation's capital, it did not stop the work from beginning or the thousands of supporters from lining Pennsylvania Avenue for the inaugural parade honoring the new president. And President Trump said tonight, now the work begins. And he's already signed his first executive order aimed at scaling back Obamacare. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Washington. Meanwhile, some local Republicans celebrating today's inauguration of President Trump. Now, the Center City Republican Club gathering tonight at the Crown Plaza to watch tonight's events. And we talked to the chairman of the Knox County Republican Party who says they're excited to see what President Trump has in store for the country. We're glad to see him finally be sworn in as president, uh, and I'm anxious to see him get to work. I'm anxious to see him fulfilling the promises that he made us as, as uh, people of the United States. This is actually the first time the group has put on an event like this. And while some people, including students, protested, others were attending watch parties. Now we sent W8E6 on your side reporter Gabriella Pagan to the campus of Maryville College for the school's fifth inauguration watch party. She has their reaction tonight. Corinne McClure is a junior at Maryville College and didn't vote for Donald Trump, but felt it was important to see her first political experience through to the end. I don't support Donald Trump. I don't support his policies, but I respect the President of the United States. And so to watch, an, watch someone that I grew up with as president be ushered out and watch someone come someone new come in. I don't think that it's my place to oppose anyone's policies if I'm not well versed on them and I think it's important for me to experience it through and through. And the fact that she wanted to take the time, she wanted to see the historical moment uh, shows frankly the level of civility and maturity I see in so many of our Maribel College students. And she wasn't the only one. Today's crowd was a mix of supporters and non-supporters. Through signing to her interpreter, college student Molly Ridgway says, I want to respect the new president. I didn't vote for President Trump, but I respect him and I'm hopeful that he can help the country and help us do good things. Because regardless of who they support, they all have the same mentality in that they support the office of the president, which is why watching today's ceremony was so instrumental in their learning. It's exciting that, you know, I participate in this democracy. I feel like a citizen. You know, I feel like somebody who helped make this decision. I feel like um, it just feels exciting to be able to know that I was part of you know, electing the president who's being sworn in right now. At Maryville College, Gabriella Pagan, WATE 6 on your side. Now, as you heard earlier, protests growing across the country throughout the day, some turning violent and clashes with police. Yeah, so far, city officials in D.C. say three officers and one person have been heard after run-ins with protesters. At least 217 people arrested in the city during the inauguration of President Trump. At one point, protesters set a limousine on fire. Now, some in the crowd throwing cups, water bottles, and objects, including chunks of concrete. Demonstrators blocking streets with newspaper boxes, setting some of them on fire as well. Take back the people's house! Take back the people's house! Take, take 
closer to home in Nashville, law enforcement physically removing several people who duct taped their arms together with chicken wire and PVC pipes, basically chaining themselves to the Tennessee State Capitol building. You see it there. Although this happened hours after President Trump was sworn in, one activist said this rally was not specifically about Donald Trump, but about making a statement to show symbolically how people need to become more active in local government. And ahead of the Women's March in D.C. tomorrow, demonstrators gathering on UT's campus this afternoon in support of the cause. Yeah, the group calling it the University of Tennessee's March for Human Rights. Well, as you can see right there, hundreds of people gathering outside the Humanities and Social Sciences building, leading the march down the pedestrian walkway. Protesters holding signs hoping to raise awareness about a number of issues, including women's reproductive rights, LGBT rights, and other causes like diversity and Black Lives Matter. We're saying indivisible. We're no longer divisible. We are indivisible, and we know what we have to do, and we're going to get there. The march not only included students, faculty, and alumni, the demonstration also included people in the Knoxville community. All right, turning now to your forecast here, Ken Weathers, uh, meteorologist, joining us here from the Storm Center. And Ken, what can we expect as we head into the weekend? Uh, there will be some rain showers returning, guys, but uh, tomorrow's not a washout. There'll be showers, but Sunday's really the better opportunity, it looks like at this point, but still extremely mild. No change there. 55 here at our studios, 60 still in Lenore City, 49 in Harriman, 58 in Oneida, 53 degrees in Wartburg and 50 in Madisonville. So still extremely mild across the board. We've seen a mostly clear sky being replaced at times by a partly to mostly cloudy sky, and that will be the trend throughout the night tonight. But I still think there'll be some patchy fog for some first thing tomorrow morning. We're watching this feature here. Notice all that moisture building through Louisiana. That is a very large complex of showers and storms. This is going to continue to make its way eastward tonight. Could actually be some severe weather across southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and southern sections of Georgia through tomorrow morning. This is really going to take a lot of the energy away from our opportunity of showers and some storms for tomorrow, but I still think we will see some. It's just not overnight tonight. It's going to be dry 56 by midnight, 53 by six in the morning. I'll let you know when the best opportunity for rain tomorrow is in just a few minutes. All right, Ken, thank you very much. And the transition of power also changing on social media tonight. The POTUS and FLOTUS accounts on Twitter changing to reflect the new president and, of course, first lady. Since becoming the new president, Donald Trump tweeting out three tweets. Now, the first one about nine hours ago, this one here, you see it's kind of a behind the scenes picture with his name about to be announced. I believe this is when he was walking out of of the White House there after he had already done the sworn in process. Now, the second tweet he sent out was this one here. This is where he was watching the parade on the inside here. He's got his families and such on behalf of my entire family. Of course, thank you, which means to everybody who voted for him. And then the third tweet he sent out here. This one uh, says signing documents to allow Mattis and Kelly. Now we're talking about General James Mattis, Secretary of Defense and General John Kelly. Secretary of Homeland Security sworn into cabinet and an executive order on Obamacare, which is set to seek the prompt repeal of the health insurance law. Kristen. All right. Thank you. Well, among the security in the Capitol today, well, it includes some of Tennessee's finest. The Tennessee Highway Patrol is sharing a couple of photos on Twitter. This one showing the crowds there. And as you can see, they are standing guard. State troopers saying the crowds are very peaceful as they are celebrating our democracy. In another post showing troopers along the parade route saying it has been a great day and a long day, as you can imagine. All right, and UT's Pride of the Southland performing at today's inauguration. They played for presidents of both parties, from President Eisenhower in 1952 to President Barack Obama in 2009 to President Trump today. Band members are also getting to spend some uh, free time in D.C. before heading home tomorrow, and of course, they played Rocky Top. Did they play? That's right, huh? Yes, they did. What else were they going to play anyway? You have to play. You have to play that. To play. How cool is that? What a great experience for them. Of course, our coverage of the 58th the inauguration doesn't end right here. That's right. You can watch President Trump's full inaugural speech and a timeline of all of the events by simply going to our website, wate.com, and then clicking on the mm -hmm. As Seen On section.